two over Adrian Peterson. He's a bigger part of the offense. Also, I think teams will be keying in a little bit on Adrian Peterson this year, and you've kind of seen it in preseason. They've, they've used him as a as a decoy a few times to get, and it, it's been working. It works. It'll work because I guarantee after after they say hike, Adrian Peterson will see two guys everywhere he goes. The bottom line, and the teams will do not want Adrian Peterson to beat them this year. Uh, so I like Westbrook a little bit better. I still have Adrian Peterson coming in at number three, but I think his numbers might be down a little bit from last season because of the reasons that I just told you. So look out for that. A lot of people, he's a sexy pick this year. A lot of people really like AP. Me, I have a few concerns about him. There's a couple guys I like better, but that's it, just two. The, just LT and Westbrook. But if those guys are gone and Adrian Peterson is still on the board, go ahead and take him, even though I think there's a few question marks. He's still Adrian Peterson. All right. Uh, number four. Steven Jackson from the Rams. I like Steven Jackson. All right, he was hurt last year when he came back. Looked like he didn't miss a beat. This year I expect him to be even better, stronger, faster. Catches a lot of balls. Steven Jackson, I like it number four. Number five, Joseph Adai. All right, he's a, the Colts just have such a good offense, and he's just the benefactor of that. He gets, a lot of, he gets a lot of goal line touches. He catches balls out of the backfield. He's basically the ideal fantasy running back, especially in a, in a point per reception league. It just ideal. It, he's worth a top five pick. Uh, he's a guy you can be confident. You put him out there, he's going to get you points week in and week out. Trust me, I know. The only thing you have to worry about is at the end of the season, the Colts have shown a tendency to rest his legs a little bit for the playoffs. So make sure that he's not the only good running back you have if you get him. Uh, number six, Marion Barber the third, Dallas Cowboys. I really like what I saw from Marion these last couple of years. And this year, uh, finally in the starting role, I think he's going to just flourish and have an amazing season. A lot of people are worried about Felix Jones coming in and taking carries. I don't see Felix Jones cutting into Marion's production uh, as much as Julius Jones did. I think he's going to cut in less. All right? So, therefore, Marion Barber, big numbers this year. Take him if you can get him at number six. Don't be scared of Felix Jones. Number seven, I like Clinton Portis. Now, he didn't average a lot of yards per carry last year, but he's a workhorse back. Uh, he touched the ball an incredible amount of times. It's amazing he played all 16 games, but he did. Uh, that's To me, that makes him kind of an injury concern because he did have a gigantic workload last year. You would think that Washington's going to ease up his workload this year, and I heard he's supposed to catch some more passes out of the backfield with new head coach Jim Zorn coming in. So I like Clinton Portis at number seven out of sheer workload, sheer, you know, volume of carries and touches. I like Clinton Portis for those reasons. But he's, he's definitely worth number seven. Number eight, Larry Johnson, Kansas City Chiefs. He's my, my Jamal Lewis pick. Everybody's writing him off. They think he's washed up. Me, I think he's going to bounce back and have a good season. Remember the two games he had before he went out last season were terrific. All right? Well over 100 yards and a couple scores in, in each, I believe. So Larry Johnson, I think, has a bounce back year, double-digit touchdowns. 1,200 yards on the ground. Not wishful thinking, maybe. Uh, number nine, Frank Gore, 49ers. With Mike Martz coming in, he figures to catch a lot more passes out of the backfield. And uh, and hopefully the Mike Martz system, if it works, if the passing scheme works, it will, it will open it up for the running back a little bit. And Frank Gore could have a bounce back here. Even though he didn't have too bad of a season last year, it was still kind of a letdown. But for, I like Frank Gore at number nine. Number ten, Willis McGahee from the Ravens. Assuming he plays, he hasn't even touched a ball yet. If he does come in and play, he put up ridiculous numbers on a really bad Ravens team last year. Uh, 1,207 rush yards, 231 receiving yards, over 1,400 total yards, eight touchdowns on a bad team, all right? Now, Baltimore is going to be a little bit better, so if McGahee's healthy, I expect his numbers to be better, too. I like McGahee if he's playing. Number 11, Marshawn Lynch. All right, second year running back, had a nice season with the Bills last year. Expect his workload to increase a little bit along with his production. Number 12, Ryan Grant of the Green Bay Packers. A lot of people are saying teams are going to stack the box, so Grant might be a bust this year. Me, I say Aaron Rodgers will beat you through the air if you stack the box. Therefore, Ryan Grant is still a relevant running back. Don't worry, not a bust issue. Probably will outplay this number 12 spot I have him in. Number 13, Jamal Lewis. All right, Cleveland has a really tough schedule. A really tough schedule. I like Jamal as a running back, but Cleveland has a really tough schedule. I see them being in a lot of close games, meaning a lot of passing in the second half, fewer rushes for Jamal Lewis. He didn't get that many yards per carry last year anyway. 
All right, but uh, you know, I like him as a, a low end number one or a high le- a high level number two. Boy, I only have one minute left. We're gonna have to. Uh, you're just gonna have to check out my website. You have to check out the site to get all the wide receivers. <laughs> Because I gotta, I gotta go. I couldn't do it within a half hour. I knew I wouldn't be able to. I was trying to do my countdown. I just, I talk too much. That's all it is. So now my half hour is up. I, I didn't get through the wide receivers or the running backs. Hey, I don't know what to tell you. You know what? Maybe, uh, maybe I'll find a little extra time and I'll come on here and I'll hack into the DRN stream at, at stream at some point in the next few days and I'll go ahead and uh, and finish it off for you guys. But I, I will get everything posted on my website. Go there, myspace.com backslash fantasy football face punch, and, uh, and check out everything I've done there. This weekend is probably your draft. I know it's mine. It's both of mine, so good luck to you. All right? Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Do smart stuff. If you want to, go copy down my, my top rankings. Hopefully that can help you along the way. And, uh, and, hey, what can I say? I'll see you next week, 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. I am Eric Pettigo. You've been listening to the Fantasy Football Face Punch, and I'm totally out of here. I am totally out of here. Later, people. But in Liberty's darkest hour, there is hope. The first time.